Hey everyone, back again with part two in our series about setting up the Blue Shark Bluetooth module on your Proxmark to make it work with your smartphone. This video is going to be about simply updating your Proxmark to the latest firmware, making sure it has Bluetooth enabled. If you do not have your Proxmark already connected to a PC, yes, uh, there are many ways to do this. We're going to be talking about using a Windows PC, just because that's what most of my audience tends to use. You will need micro USB. That is the world we're still living in with the Proxmark. And when she fires up, if you get blinky lights, bright, shiny lights, you'll know you're in pretty good shape. And on your Windows machine, you should see in the device manager a new COM port show up. So where do we get the firmware we need to flash our Proxmark to the latest version? Well, you get it with your Proxmark environment, the actual Proxspace environment, the entire package available from the RFID research group on their GitHub. You can see here the Proxmark 3 is the repo, and you could download the raw source. If you want to compile from source, many people do that, that's fine. If you do this, however, there is a specific file you have to edit this makefile.platform file, you would actually uncomment a line in here. So see this Bluetooth add-on, this Bluetooth flash, you would wind up just removing that comment and then you could compile from source. You will then have a software package containing the right firmware that you would flash on your Proxmark. That's a lot of work that we don't have to do, however. Thanks to our good friend Gator, the site proxmarkbuilds.org, that works for all of us on Windows. If you want the latest pre-compiled binaries, Gator has a script that will actually pull from GitHub and compile with or without the Blue Shark add-on module enabled. These links should go to the latest build. However, there's something a little bit wonky on Gator's site. Uh, it's not in these known issues, but I did talk to Gator about it. He's, he's like, oh, I got to fix that. I got to figure it out. Sometimes these links don't point to the absolute latest build. However, there is a file viewer tool, proxmarkbuilds.org slash file viewer. You can get all of the latest builds, including the latest RDV4 with Bluetooth right here. So let's see what we can see. Two days ago was the latest push. Here's our huge 7-zip file. Let's give her a download of that. And that download is now completed. Here we have a nice 7-zip file. WinRAR should be able to handle this for us. This is what you'd expect to see. This is how we would normally flash our Proxmark. If you've never done this before, if you've never used the Proxmark before, well, welcome. Your command environment would be here in PM3, but we want to flash this. We could flash the boot ROM and the full image separately, but typically flash all is all you need. This has gotten a lot better over the years. It has definitely works more smoothly than it has in the past. It'll automatically detect the COM port. There we go. It automatically found the Proxmark, flashed the bootloader, and it's flashing the full image now. We get our Iceman icicles with the little red tips on the bleeding edge. And away we go. Have a nice day. So this Proxmark device is now updated to the absolute latest firmware, including the Bluetooth add-on modules. Now, when you're using the Proxmark environment, the actual software environment, it doesn't matter in that instance. Some people have asked me, well, I have multiple Proxmarks. Do I have one with a Bluetooth and one without? Do I need two separate instances of Prox Space on my machine? No, you don't. The Prox Space environment, the command environment, is going to communicate, again, over serial, or even if you're using Bluetooth, you're not really using Bluetooth, you're communicating typically over a Bluetooth bridge, so sort of a TCP connection. So I have found it doesn't matter which command environment I'm running on my laptop. The main thing is keeping your Proxmark updated on the device itself. It's a good idea to keep that up to date, to flash pretty regularly, and to update your Proxmark environment either on your PC or on your phone the next time you connect. And that's what we're going to do in part three. Stay safe out there.